Hey guys, what's up? Turbo Loco here. Welcome back to our Portugal 2014 FIFA World Cup Brazil run. We are in part two and at the start of our qualifying in Europe, this is our group. We are in Group F with Scotland, Kazakhstan, San Marino, Italy and Finland. So the only team at the moment from what I've seen from Portugal that could really pose a threat to our qualifying campaign is Italy. Potentially Scotland and Finland obviously if we don't play well but I don't think that we're gonna be that bad because well Portugal have been absolutely amazing in the friendly matches that we've been playing in. So our first match for Portugal is going to be against Scotland. We're at home for this one. So can Portugal start off on the right foot? We stuck with the same lineup as we have been doing in the friendly matches because this lineup that I have is pretty strong compared to most of the teams in this group. Like I said, Italy will be the only ones that will be able to stop us. So we'll see how we get on here as Ruben Almarim is coming forward now for Portugal and he just scored. <laughs> Ruben Almarin has opened the scoring here for Portugal as it is 1-0 in the third minute. I thought I was going to lay it off to Ronaldo, but I was like, no, just shoot. And it's just gone straight in. And Portugal are 1-0 up already. Fantastic start. Just so easy just to go through and do that. Even on, you know, world class, which is quite a difficult difficulty on this game. Playing as Portugal makes it look so easy. Ronaldo to Moutinho. Will he get it? Oh, just tried to get past that player. Not getting past him. Still 1-0 here in the first 23 minutes. Um, I forgot that we scored so early. I thought it was like, you know, near half time, but clearly not. Portugal haven't been as good as what they were in the friendly matches we played against some of the bigger sides in the world. Scotland have caused a few problems for us going forward after the third minute goal. I think that goal at the very start of the match was definitely a wake-up call for Scotland just to lock down and maybe just, you know, just see the game out and see if they could actually just maybe equalise further on in the game. I don't know. It's half-time and we are 1-0 up thanks to Almerin's strike. Over the top here. Nani, can he go through? He's just getting shrugged off the ball there. And that was a horrible mistake by Scotland's keeper. And that is 2-0. That happens literally once every qualifying campaign. I'm not kidding. Like, the goalkeeper will be put under pressure. And, um, well, I mean, at least it wasn't from a miss kick this time. Actually was just uh, a passing error from the goalkeeper. But like I said, it happens most qualifying campaigns. I don't know why. I just, I always seem to benefit in one match from that sort of stuff. It's gone to Almerin. And that's free. Assisted by Almerin. Bruma scores to make it 3 0. And, well, Scotland are in a lot of trouble in this first match. It's only the 65th minute. And we've scored three goals. Here comes Scotland. They scored. That's 3 1. And that's Morrison with the goal to give Scotland a tiny bit of hope. It was a nice strike into the bottom corner. And Portugal have conceded against Scotland. Okay, well, my defending was a little bit shaky on that one. Almost the end of the game with about three minutes left to play. Scotland have been bested here by Portugal. Um, it took us a while to get into our swing. But, you know, I'm quite satisfied with this first result in the group stage. And hopefully soon we'll get to play the Minnows. I think against the Minnows I probably will play more reserve players. There's no reason why I should be playing Ronaldo up top against um, San Marino, e even though that would be quite funny. I mean, I think I should do it at least once, um, maybe the first time round just to build up points. But yeah, um, we'll see. But 3-1 against Scotland, not too bad to start the campaign. Look at that green form on the right hand side. I think we're going to see a lot of that until we face Italy, I think. I'm happy with the lineup that we got there. I think it's a uh, really good Good, strong team and um, yeah hopefully we can make Ronaldo into a 99 rated player he's rated 94 at the moment our next match of the qualifying campaign is away from home against Finland a tricky tie for Portugal but I'm sure that we'll have the firepower to get past Finland pro Cohen Trau and I just got fouled. Yeah, it's going to be a free kick to Portugal. And a chance for Moutinho to possibly score this one. 
Okay, well, the line has come forward a little bit more, so the referee says no. Let's see if we can bend this one in with Matinho. A lot of people will probably be screaming for me to take it with Ronaldo, but um, Ronaldo, not a brilliant free kick take taker. Have you ever seen him take free kicks? He hasn't scored one for ages. Almiron, Ronaldo, through ball to Pereira, and he almost scored there. Good, well, good pass by Ronaldo, and an unlikely pressing forward there of Pereira over the top. Can Nani get there? Into the box to Ronaldo. Oh, that was a horrendous miss. We should have scored that one. Bruma pressing forward for Portugal. Good passing, but that pass was not good. Some of the passing has been quite questionable in this game. Every time I tried to link it up, up forward, it just it's just not working. It's it's a bit annoying. So it's half time, nil nil against Finland so far. We've had quite a lot of chances. Ronaldo missing a big chance earlier on in the game, but I'm sure we'll score eventually. Through ball, and here comes Nani. Can he score for Portugal? Can he go in or oh, almost bounced its way in, but didn't have enough power on it? Bruma. To Ronaldo. Oh my god, really? Ronaldo's making that kind of touch? That's like a Lee 2 player touch. Ronaldo to Bruma. Yes, come on! And Bruma has found the net finally in the 90th minute. Thanks to Ronaldo's assist. I mean, you know, it was set up for us perfectly, wasn't it? That's where. And Portugal have nicked it late on. I mean, you could say we deserved it because of the amount of shots we had, but at the same time, you know, um, Finland must be so disheartened to lose like that. So Portugal pick up another win in this campaign. A very squeaky win. We had to get it in the 90th minute, but hey, it doesn't matter. We still got the points. But um, like I said, I was a little bit disappointed in the shooting from Portugal and the link-up play as well. I guess it was just how Finland played against us as well. They were very disruptive and they didn't let the front three of Ronaldo, Bruma and Nani do their own thing. So credit to Finland, but they still lose. So our next match in our qualifying campaign is going to be against San Marino. I don't feel I need to use Ronaldo in this game, even though it's very tempting to. But I want to see how some of these substitutes get on against San Marino. Because we got San Marino to play, and then we got Kazakhstan as well. It's a good chance to give some of the starting 11 a bit of rest. Now, even though we will probably beat San Marino, it's still going to be irritating in regards that some of the smaller teams on the, these FIFA games, especially these World Cup games, they do tend to be very um, defensive and um, just really, really incredibly disruptive. Ed Air. Nani, I forgot to take him off, but okay, Nani, straight in, yeah, <laughs> okay, it's 1-0, I mean, as expected, I forgot to take Nani off, I don't know why, but okay, well, it's 1-0, and um, Nani has got the goal. Raul Morales, that's gone in, that's 2-0, and in 35 minutes, Portugal are 2-0 up, and, you know, it's to be expected, I can't really celebrate too much, it's only San Marino, but yeah, it's fine, it's cool. You know, it's a game we have to play. You know, that's what the group gave us when we randomised it at the start of the series. And we got two minnows, so we have to play them. Miguel Feloso. He just scored. An absolute screamer. An absolute screamer for Miguel Feloso. I mean, I just said that I won't celebrate too much. But that was a hell of a goal by Miguel Feloso. Assisted by Almarim. Look at the way this bent in there. That was an absolute thunderbolt against San Marino. And that is 3-0. I mean, that, that is probably one of the best goals I've scored on this game. Like, no joke. And it comes against one of the worst teams in the world. To Entrao. That's four. Fabio Contrao has scored and well I mean <laughs> there's nothing to play for in this match now you may as well just say hey let's stop the game now it's 4-0 before the half and San Marino are just well they're just getting blown away now half time we are 4-0 up against San Marino is there any surprise in that no definitely not 
But the goal that Miguel Feloso scores has to be one of the best goals I've scored on this game. Genuinely a contender for goal of the tournament. Here we go. Eder has scored to make it 5-0. And well, Portugal just dominant in this match. Eder scores 5-0. And it's just a good chance to get some of the players that I wouldn't really use against some of the stronger teams. Nani. Eder. Morales, that's six or seven, I can't, can't even count at this point. And that's the end of the game. Portugal wins 6-0 over San Marino. A very basic result against San Marino back here. You know, today's San Marino might have performed slightly better because they have actually improved in recent years. They're, you know, that might sound a bit strange to some viewers, but they actually have, to be fair. So that's the table. We have nine points from three games and that result against San Marino really helps the goal difference out. And, um, you know, if Italy do get a win in their next game against Finland, then, of course, we'll be ahead on goal difference. I just want to check out that Miguel Feloso goal one more time because, honestly, it's just such a peach. Look at that. Absolutely sensational. I know it was against San Marino goalkeeper, but still absolutely insane. So we got to play San Marino again. And um, of course, I'm going to edit the squad again to put on some lesser known players again, just so I can give the players that played in the last match a rest. So we're against San Marino again, this time away from home. It shouldn't really matter, to be fair. I've changed the squad massively, dragging out some of the players that are actually at the very bottom of our reserve pile and giving them a game against San Marino. You know, they're not going to be used at all in this series, apart from this match. So give them a bit of a run around and see how they play. Ribal Silvio. And, well, I mean, this has been a bit disappointing from Portugal here. These um, reserve players can't really seem to break down San Marino. Here we go, though. This is a chance. And that's a goal, finally. And 32 minutes in, Varela has scored to make it 1-0. Finally, they actually did something good. We were struggling in the first 30 minutes. And I was thinking in the back of my mind, like, hold on. Maybe San Marino have got me here. Go on. Oh, just wide here. Struggling with this um, reserve team from Portugal. They're really, like, they're not brilliant, are they? Not at the moment. Only on 1-0 against San Marino. I'm not expecting to smash them 6-0 again. That's why I've done this, just to, like, maybe get a couple of goals and just win the game normally. But, um, yeah, they haven't been that impressive, this backup team. Through ball. And yes, 2-0, good goal. And Carlos Martins has scored to make it 2 against San Marino. They're going to win this game 2-0. Not quite a 6-0, but the reserves did pretty well for that game. San Marino were a bit disruptive and um, I think the reserves were just a little bit, um, well, they lack match experience and fitness really in our save right now in our little series that we're doing. So I doubt I'll be using them again, but they got the result I wanted and that's still good. So we have played one more game than Italy and we have 12 points. Italy have nine, but they still have a game in hand. Scotland have played all four games and only have six points. So we've got a big gap between us and Scotland. So it will be pretty much Portugal and Italy battling for that first place position. So our next match is against Italy, the first big test of our qualifying campaign. Both teams are currently on 12 points. So these matches against Italy will determine whether we will finish first or second place. You know, I won't mind if we have to go through the playoffs. It's just really inconvenient, you know, but I have every faith that Portugal can beat a side like Italy. Crossed in by Italy, headed away, thankfully. Come on. I see Bruma. Can he make the run? Ronaldo got in the way, dude. Come on, move. <laughs> I know you want the ball, but it's Bruma's that I wanted. Crossed in. Italy. Oh, that was a bit of a weird move. Um, but thankfully, Balotelli's effort goes over the bar. That was a hell of a ball to Ronaldo. Yes, what a goal. And Ronaldo scores against Italy. What a ball that was to Ronaldo. Absolutely amazing. And Ronaldo has given Portugal the lead. Rumour, he's been unleashed. 
He still got it. Into the box. And I don't know why Buffon didn't pick that one up. It's Ronaldo again. Ronaldo has doubled the lead for Portugal. And that's two. Ronaldo on fire in this match. Bruma did really well then to shrug off the defender. I think it was just a case of Bruma was just a little bit too fast. But I don't know why Buffon didn't pick that up. It was right next to him. Here comes Italy. Oh, good save. But that might be a goal. Oh, oh that should have been a goal. Absolutely should have been. Can Portugal get more in the second half or will Italy stage a comeback? Portugal moving the ball around really nicely here. You know, just making sure that Italy don't have many chances in this game. And as Balotelli pushes forward here, he threw balls it to De Rossi. Couldn't quite tackle him there. Got to be a bit careful that we don't throw this one away. Good save by Patricio. Portugal will take the first game against Italy 2-0 here. Um, when we go into the next video, after this one is finished, we have to play Italy away from home. And that could be a harder fixture because obviously we are away from home. But um, at the moment, as it stands, it's advantage Portugal in this group. It was always going to be Portugal versus Italy in this group. I couldn't really see Scotland um, doing much or Finland, to be honest with you, even though Finland were pretty good against us. Oh, Italy off the post and they scored there. I think the game really, really wanted that. No matter how many times I tried to clear the ball, you know, they just got it back and then they hit the post and tap it in from that. So, yeah, fair enough. But um, Portugal will still be winning this game and it's advantage Portugal in this group so far. 2-1 victory over Italy. Pretty good. And that will keep us at the top of the table. So that is your table so far. And like I said, it's just a battle between Portugal and Italy. Portugal have the three point advantage. If we beat Italy away from home in the next part, then I reckon that Portugal will be qualifying out of this group automatically. So the other qualifying zones haven't really moved that much since the last time. So uh, this is your whole European zone. And um, apart from our group, are there any surprises in these groups? I'm having a look right now. Uh, group A, Denmark seem pretty comfortable at the top of that one. Uh, in Group B, Hungary are doing really well in that one. But Switzerland are on their tails. Um, group C is pretty close between, well, Bosnia, Northern Ireland and Ukraine for that playoff spot. Russia pulled away a little bit. Um, in Group D, again, it's pretty close between Netherlands, France and Croatia. Georgia is slightly behind. In Group E, Czech Republic are five points ahead of England, which is quite surprising. Group G seems pretty standard, you know, Germany in first place, Montenegro in second place with Turkey just behind them. Um, group H is a battle between Spain and Poland. And in Group I, you've got basically anyone could qualify from that group. I'm not kidding. It's so close. Even Belarus with a decent run of games could do it. But this is your second part of your Portugal World Cup qualifying. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. Tune in for the next part of our qualifying series with Portugal where hopefully we can make it to the 2014 FIFA World Cup. And if you did enjoy this video today then give it a like and subscribe. Keep it local as always and I'll see you again for the next video.